Thanks for having me here today. Um, I'm going to pop these slides up when you get a chance. So I'm here today to talk about what a healthy diet is. And um, a healthy diet is different for everybody. You know, you hear in the media, should I eat paleo or keto? Uh, maybe should I be a vegetarian? Mediterranean diet? There's all different types of diets and, and conflicting information out there. And uh, I've been working for pe with people um, as a, nutri a nutritional counselor for well over 40 years. I've worked with thousands and thousands of people, helping people lose weight, uh, lower their cholesterol, uh, help them with their type 2 diabetes to get that normal, and a host of other things. But a lot of people come in with misconceptions about what a healthy diet is. So today what I'd like to do is talk about some myths about what healthy dieting is or healthy food is, and we'll go on to teach you guys about what I feel is the best way to eat and the healthiest way to eat. So one of the first myths that I deal with is about milk and dairy. And uh, this guy here, milk does the body good. I'm sure you guys have seen this commercial, um, but it doesn't look like it's doing too well for him. Um, when I work with clients, first thing I do is I take them off cow dairy um, because in a glass of milk, there are hormones, growth hormones, and steroids and things like that that they put into the cows to make them bigger and to produce more milk. Um, unfortunately, these residues get in your system and disrupt your hormonal system, which can lead to problems down the line with thyroid issues or um, maybe reproductive issues and things like that. Most people don't know that these things are in their milk. Milk also contains a lot of antibiotic residues because the cows are given antibiotics so they don't get sick. So they stay around, they can produce milk. But these antibiotic residues get into your system, disrupt your system, and you can become antibiotic resistant as you get older. And we know, we've heard, there's a lot of this going around today. Also, um, I deal with the people and I say, listen, I want you to come off milk. And they go, well, that's good because I'm lactose intolerant. Everybody in this room is lactose intolerant. That's not the issue. Your body produces lactase, which is an enzyme that breaks down milk sugar lactose. During your first year of life, when you're a baby and you're breastfeeding, you need that enzyme to break down the milk sugar. However, once you stop breastfeeding, your body stops producing lactase. We're all lactose intolerant. What most of the problems is, or not lactose intolerant, but it's more a problem with one of the milk dairy proteins called casein. So there's two cow dairy or milk dairy proteins. There's casein and there's whey. And a lot of people have heard about whey, and whey is good for some people, not good for others. But casein is really not good for anybody. Um, it takes two to four hours for your body to digest a carbohydrate, and about four to six hours to digest proteins and fats. Research shows that it takes 14 hours of casein in your system. They've done research on it. And after 14 hours in your system, it doesn't even begin to digest. It's kind of non-digestive. It gets caught up in your immune system, and I'm sorry, not your immune system, and your digestive system, and putrefies, leaks out, and causes different reactions in different people. It's indicative of a lot of different types of allergies, asthmatics, any breathing disorders and things like that, skin issues and other things. So when you go to grab a glass of milk or some cheese or yogurt or anything pretty much from a cow, you have to realize these other things are in there. In order to combat that, a healthier version would be what's called an A2 milk, which doesn't contain the bad form of protein in, in uh, your system. So we tell our clients if they want to, you have to look for A2 milk. It comes from cows that don't have a certain genetic mutation. And then also, if you can get organic, that'd be fine. Because if it's organic, you know there's no hormones, no antibiotics, and things like that that can harm you. So that's the first myth that we like to dispel. Next myth, which is kind of along the way with dairy, is everybody says, oh, they think Greek yogurt, yogurt is healthy for you. But Greek yogurt produced in the United States are from cows, which contain all the negative things we just discussed before. If you get Greek yogurt from Greece, it comes from a sheep or a goat. And it doesn't have any of the things that we just discussed in it. So if you're going to have Greek yogurt, make sure it's from Greek. or go with a goat's milk yogurt or sheep's milk yogurt produced here. If it's organic, it's even better because then you have no pesticides, herbicides, and all those other th things in there, hormones, and all that. It's another common myth. Red meat is not good for you. Some people say it causes cancer. Some people say it produces high cholesterol. It all depends on the type of meat that you're eating. Most meat that's on the shelves these days are injected again with hormones to make the cows bigger get into your system. They also are fed or injected antibiotics, which again, those residues get in your system and disrupt it. Some of it has food dyes, and they also come from cows that don't eat what they're naturally supposed to eat. Cows graze on grass, and their whole digestive system is based on eating grass. But the cows that are in the supermarket and the meat you're getting, they're fed grains, and more specifically, genetically modified organism grains, which your body really can identify and digest. If you're going to have red meat, and it's good for some people, not good for others, 
You want to go with it grass fed, grass finished, antibiotic hormone free. Those are the best type of red meat to have. Also, we have found out through our own research and other research done, there are certain types of people who do really well eating red meat. If you're an O blood type, red meat super medicinal for you. Specifically, if it's a clean meat that I was just telling you about, grass fed. If you're an A blood type, you have the exact opposite reaction. Not good for you. You'll eat it, it'll bog you down, make it hard for you to digest, and make you tired and sluggish. So when it comes to red meat, is healthy for you or unhealthy for you? It depends on the type of meat and also on your blood type. Next thing I get a lot is eggs cause high cholesterol. According to Dr. Phil Berardi, a nutritional biochemist, he states that your body, everybody's body in this room, produces about 2,000 milligrams of cholesterol a day. According to the American Heart Association, they only want you to have 300 to 500 milligrams a day. So just your body's amount it produces alone should give you a heart attack. Now, if you eat 1,000 milligrams of cholesterol in your diet, your body will only produce 1,000. If you eat 1,500 milligrams of cholesterol in your diet, your body will only produce 500, trying to maintain that 1,000 milligram homeostasis. So it's the exact opposite of what we've been led to believe. People are always saying eating cholesterol is going to cause high cholesterol. Actually, the opposite is true. The more cholesterol you eat, your body will produce less. I've had clients, one client in specific, um, he um, had high cholesterol. His numbers were 280, 340 on the cholesterol, and they want you to be at about 200. He was on to our cholesterol lowering drug for three years, and his cholesterol was still high. So he came in to see me. He wanted to lose weight and get healthy. So I went through everything, and I said, listen, we have to include some eggs and some clean red meat in your diet. And he goes, oh, no, I, I can't have that. My doctor said I'm not allowed to have it. It causes high cholesterol. I said, well, last three years, how much of that have you had? He goes, hardly at all. I said, that's causing your high cholesterol. How can it if you're not eating it? And it kind of struck a chord. I'm like, I'm not eating it. And he's telling me not to because it causes high cholesterol. So I said, listen, follow my program for six weeks, get a cholesterol test, and let's see the effect it has on your body. Six weeks later, he dropped like 25 pounds, feeling great, energetic, went and got the test, came back, dropped 100 points of cholesterol in six weeks, eating in his diet eggs and red meat. It won't happen like that with everybody. It all depends, as I said before, on the type of blood type you have. But for his blood type, it worked wonders for him. Next myth I get, a lot of people think fats make you fat. What we know, what makes you fat, is a high insulin level. So insulin is a very powerful hormone. The higher levels are, and the more often you produce insulin, your body's going to stay in fat storage, and you're going to become fat. When your body produces insulin, it only produces insulin, not only, but it produces a mass amount of insulin when you eat too many carbohydrates. So carbohydrates in high amounts will cause your body to go into fat storage. It will trip your hunger hormone, ghrelin, your fat storage hormone, leptin. It will make you tired, it make you cranky, and all these negative things will happen from eating too many carbohydrates. It pushes you into fat storage, and at that point, once you release insulin, your body will not burn anything for energy except for sugar. So if you're eating a lot of carbohydrates, you're in a gym trying to lose weight, trying to get healthy, and you eat a high carbohydrate diet, you think you're burning fat on the treadmill, all you're doing is just cleaning out that sugar, and the fat storage is staying there. So fats don't make you fat. Too many carbohydrates will, specifically if you're eating healthy fats. Next myth I get, or dispel, is that beans are a protein or a good source of protein. So for every bean out there except for one, there are two to three grams of carbohydrates for every one gram of protein in beans. So it's more of a carbohydrate food. You have two to three grams of carbs, every gram of protein. So it's more of a carbohydrate food. You eat too many carbohydrates, you spill insulin. You spill insulin, your body's driven to fat storage. Also, the protein contained in beans are incomplete proteins. Your body requires complete proteins to function properly. So it's really not a good source of protein at all. If you're looking for protein intake, you would not want to rely on beans. Another one we get is whole wheat is good for you. I want whole wheat bread, I want whole wheat bagels, I want whole wheat cereal. What we know about wheat is that it contains a, a protein called gluten. I'm sure everybody in this room has heard of gluten before. Um, we're big advocates of going gluten-free because we know that gluten is a huge inflammatory marker for the human digestive system. 
Gluten will definitely inflame your gut and make it almost impossible for you to absorb nutrients. You have calcium issues, you can't absorb calcium. So what we do with our clients, we like to take them off uh, any wheat products so we can clear up their guts, get the inflammation out so they can start working uh, healthy, losing weight, and feeling better. A healthy diet is not, which we're going to cover, but there's a great uh, line here by Dr. Mark Hyman, and he says there's a health food section in the grocery store. What does that make the rest of the foods sold there? So if you have a health food section, what's the other section? Is that the unhealthy section? Personally, I think it is. So a healthy diet is not foods that are sprayed with chemicals or have added chemicals in them. These guys have hazmat suits here, and they're spraying the fields with pesticides and herbicides. They don't want to get this stuff on their skin. But you guys will take it and eat it and get it inside your body, which is even more dangerous. So we definitely want to stay away from spray chemicals. Um, also, some people think that, oh, I'll just wash my fruit and vegetables off and I'll get rid of those herbicides and pesticides. But you can't wash it off because most of the spray here, a lot of it will land on the ground, it will rain, and those chemicals are uptaken into the soil and then up into the roots of the plant and inside the plant. So you really can't even wash it off. So you're looking for vegetation, fruits and vegetables, always look for organic or have your own organic um, vegetable garden in your backyard. It's the safest, healthiest types of food you can get. Next thing, when we're talking about proteins and meat and things like that, that you don't want to really have any animals that inject with antibiotics or hormones. We spoke about that before. It gets into your system, the residues, and disrupts your system and, and will not make you healthy. It will take away from your health. A lot of people are surprised when I tell them that livestock account for 70% of antibiotic use in the, in the United States. That's amazing. They're fed it, they're injected it, and you guys are getting residues and become antibiotic resistant. Also, as we said before, animals are injected with steroids and growth hormones to make them bigger and produce more meat. That's not a healthy diet. Also, industrial uh, livestock production, you know, they have these animals living in warehouses and they're all stuck together to get no exercise, they get no sun. And they're not fed grass, they're fed genetically modified organisms. They're not gonna produce a healthy type of meat. You wanna go again with grass-fed meat, you wanna go with grass-finished meat, antibiotic, hormone-free, that type of meat is not going to be healthy for you. When it comes to fish, you don't want to have farm-raised fish. You guys go out to eat or buy fish for the house. You always want to get wild caught. Farm-raised fish, they're not raised in a natural environment. Um, they're living in polluted waters. They're fed a ton of antibiotics, and there's a lot of parasites, and, and they live in their own waste material. It's just not a healthy type of fish. So you always want to ask, if you're at a restaurant or you're buying from the food store, always ask for wild caught. You, uh, wild caught it'll be much healthier. And you also want to stay away from laboratory-made foods. Franken-foods, these are foods that are made in laboratory chemicals. Our bodies don't have the receptor sites to absorb these nutrients. They're just toxic to us. Your, your digestive system has evolved over hundreds of thousands of years to um, absorb the nutrients from the environment, from the natural foods that are grown here on Earth. It's going to take us another couple hundred thousand years in order to absorb any chemicals. Would you guys consider this a healthy meal? It's from a very famous chain of restaurants. I'm not gonna name the name, but this is a, a kid's meal. In this picture, this meal is eight years old. It lived in my garage. I had it out like this on a platter in my garage for eight years. Bugs wouldn't eat it, animals wouldn't touch it, and it still looked the same. The paper wrappings started disintegrating and you can smell the chemicals in them. They're just like chemical filled, and that's starting to disintegrate, but that food's eight years old. I would have had it here today for you, and it would have been 15 years old, but my last demonstration, I left on the table, and the cleaning ladies threw it out. They thought it was garbage. But that's eight-year-old food. Filled with chemicals, if those chemicals are still on those wrappers eight years later, and you can smell them, imagine what it's doing inside your body. Boom. So, I hope I didn't scare you, but what is a healthy diet? Here we go. Healthy diet consists of whole foods. You want to have a whole food diet. Whole foods are a thing that only has one ingredient. It doesn't need a nutrition label. It doesn't need a table of contents. When we're talking about fruits and vegetables, an apple's an apple. There's nothing else in there. Banana's a banana. Pepper's a pepper. Cucumber's a cucumber. No other explanation. And specifically if it's organic, you know it's going to be less likely to have herbicides and pesticides sprayed on it. That's part of a healthy diet. 
Next is, when it comes to proteins and fats, things like beef and poultry, seafood, eggs, nuts and seeds, salmon does not need an ingredient label. Hamburger, steak, chicken, turkey, no ingredient labels needed. And specifically, if it's antibiotic and hormone fruit, free and wild raised. Best thing to eat, that's a healthy diet. Well, foods that have been grown or lived on Earth for thousands of years, things that have been here for really long for our digestive system to adapt to it, be able to suck the nutrition out and build healthy cells, that's a healthy diet. So just to reiterate, bring this all together about what a healthy diet is. There are whole foods with only one ingredient, foods with no herbicides or pesticides, foods with no antibiotics or hormones, foods with no added chemicals, foods that basically have grown here or lived here for many years. So I want to kind of end this little talk on right here. Your body is made up of trillions of cells and produces billions of new cells every day. Where do you think it gets the raw constituents to build these cells from? It just doesn't grab something out of thin air and say, I'm going to make a, a new brain cell here. I'm just going to grab something out of thin air and make a new immune system cell. It doesn't do that. It takes the material from the foods that you eat and builds new cells. So if you're going to eat healthy foods that don't, aren't full of chemicals and toxins, um, foods that were grown here on Earth, foods that don't have other things in them, that's what you want to do. You want to stay away from the chemicals, eat the good healthy food. So if you eat good healthy foods that are high in nutrition, you're going to build strong immune system cells, strong brain cells, you'll be able to think more clearly, you're not going to have a problem with osteoarthritis because you have it later on, you're not going to have problems uh, with, um, with bone decay. All good things can happen, you can have a nice, strong, healthy body. However, if you're eating foods that have low in nutrition, they're made in the laboratory, they're full of pesticides, herbicides, toxins, you're going to have weak cells, you're going to have immune system problems, you're going to be getting sick all the time, you're going to have bone decay, tooth decay, you have trouble remembering things, fogginess. So, you want to stick with good, healthy foods for that reason. And finally, I'll this with, my mother always told me, I know your mother's always told you, you are what you eat. If you eat good, healthy, nutritious food, you're going to be amazing. But if you eat food that's poisoned or weak, you're not going to be so amazing. So do yourself a favor, before you put anything in your mouth, think about it. Is this food going to make me stronger and healthier, or is it going to take away from my health? Thank you for listening.